Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's graph something a little bit more complicated. Here we have hyperbolas that are not with the center at the origin, but offset to some extent. Also notice that here we have the x term that's positive. Here we have the y term that's positive. And sometimes it gets a little bit complicated or a little bit confusing. So we got to be very careful and pay very close attention to how we actually graph these. It's more the confusion part that we have to go over. It's not difficult per se, but we need to understand what direction the hyperbola is going to open up and how things are being offset. All right, let's start with the one on the right. Notice that uh, we have 16 and 9 in the denominator. We can change that to 4 squared and 3 squared. So when we put it in this form, like that's a general form, it makes it easier to see how big the box is going to be that we need to draw. Over here, the same thing. Let's write this as 4 squared and write this as 3 squared. Now we need to find the center of the hyperbola. Notice that in the x direction there's no shift, but in the y direction there's a shift. There's a shift upward of 4. So 0 for the x direction, 4 for the y direction. So this is the center of the hyperbola. Now we need to draw the box. Notice that in the x direction we add 4 and subtract 4, so we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is plus a and minus a relative to the central point. In the y direction, we need to, shi uh, we need to shift up and down three units. So we go 1, 2, 3 up and 1, 2, 3 down. So here, this is going to be 4 and 4. This is the point... Uh, that would be a negative 4 and 4. So that's then even with the central point this way. And this right here is going to be the point 0, 7. And this is going to be the point 0 and 1. Notice that's 3 units above the central point and 3 units below based upon this number right there. Now we can draw the box. So the box is going to look like this. And we can then draw the diagonal lines. The diagonal lines are going to go right through the corner. Now, we need to know if it opens upward or downward. Since the x term is positive, we know that it opens sideways. Not downward, but sideways. And so, that means the hyperbola will look like this. Oop, that was a little sloppy. There we go. And this way, and this way. So there's our hyperbola, which opens sideways because the x term is positive. Here we know that the hyperbola is going to open upward and downward because the y term is positive. But first again, we need to find the central, the center of the, hyper, of the hyperbola. And we know that in the x direction will be shifted three units to the right, one, two, three. And in the y direction will be shifted down two units, one, two. So right here is where we're going to have the center of the hyperbola at 3 comma negative 2. That's the center of the hyperbola. Now, we need to add and subtract in the x direction, 3, and add and subtract in, oh, sorry. <laughs> See, this is where we need to be careful. So this is a squared and b squared if we have x positive and y negative. So this will be b squared and a squared. So maybe we'll write b squared underneath here and a squared underneath here. So this allows us to figure out that we need to move left and right four units from our central location here. So 3 plus 4 is 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 3 minus 4 gives us negative 1, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, like that. So this is the point negative 1, negative 2, and this is the point 7, negative 2. So that's in the x direction. In the y direction, we're going to go up 3 units and down 3 units, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. And there's going to be the upper, and, the upper and lower limit of the box. So this is going to be 3 and 1, and this is going to be 3 and negative 5. Okay, we now find all the points on the four sides of the box. We can now go ahead and complete the box. And again, it's a really good idea to go ahead and label the numbers in such a way. You can say, well, this here is y plus k, and this is x minus h. And this is b squared and this is a squared because when you do that, you can see from the general equation which numbers represent what. 
Okay, so this unit, this distance right here, that would be the A distance, and the A is four, so that would be four units this way, and then this distance here would be four units this way, so that gives you kind of a feel of what that looks like. Now let's draw the diagonals. Will it open up or down, up and down, or sideways? Well, since the Y term is positive, we know that it opens up and down. So that means that the hyperbola will go to this point, it will asymptotically reach those two lines, and it will go to this point and asymptotically reach those two lines. So that's how you can see what the hyperbola looks like based upon the equations. And that is how it's done. And yes, it is sometimes confusing, so labeling them like that sometimes helps you figure out which way it looks. It's just that it's a negative, and you just have to be sure that. Where the negative belongs to. The negative belongs to the x, goes up and down. The negative belongs to the y, it goes sideways. What is that? It's just uh, uh, the h and k. Because h and k are plus. The equation is minus. Yep, that's right. So when you see a plus, it shifts downward. When you see a negative, it shifts upward. Yeah, that's counterintuitive. Yep. All right, but that's how you do it. You made mistakes by that. <laughs> I do.